Hi, I'm Jason Weinberger, Artistic Director of WCF Symphony, welcoming you back to another season of Sound Insights, which is our pre-concert previews. We're doing these online. We're also having uh, live pre-concert talks as well. So I'm gonna slightly change the format this year. Again, we're always evolving in this digital world and uh, try to give you some insights in this setting that are a little bit different from what I'll be talking about on the concert night at the actual pre-concert talk. So that's our, that's our approach with Sound Insights this year. We'll also be hearing from some of our guest artists who are appearing with us throughout the season as well as some of our own musicians. So this will be a great place for you to get to know the personalities that you see and you hear on stage. Now we've got a great concert planned for October 1st. This is a um, kind of a big return for us. And so there, on one hand, there's some, um, uh, some musical excitement. And on the other hand, there's excitement of just being together on stage, big audiences with you together with us. Um, we're really excited about that. In fact, that's the theme of our whole season. So it's really appropriate for us to start this way with our season opener here at the Gallagher Blue Dorn. And the reason I chose to talk to you from Gallagher is because it's just such a thrill to be back here in this venue with full audiences. We've done a number of concerts here during this calendar year. And of course we did some last calendar year as well, but it seemed like we were constantly modifying our plans, changing the size of the orchestra, the layout, oftentimes changing the venue, moving outdoors instead of being indoors. Uh, there's been a lot of that the last couple of years. And so in a way, this concert marks the beginning of a, a new cycle, a return to full orchestra concerts, but with a real appreciation, as I mentioned, for that togetherness. Um, in fact, you can see there's stuff going on in the building already this year, lots of different events, people coming together. So it's just great to be a part of that and to be here at the symphony, um, bringing that to all of you with this fantastic program we have coming up this weekend. So the program begins with Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto featuring our guest artist, Stuart Goodyear. Stuart and I go way back. We, we worked together more than 10 years ago at the Louisville Orchestra, I guess I'll I'll leave it at that because I'm not even sure how long ago it was, but we had a fabulous time doing a bunch of um, outreach type concerts. And when you do that, I think you have a slightly different interaction than you might if it's um, more of a concert hall type presentation. And Stuart and I just love getting to know each other that way. So we finally found an opportunity to get him up here to Iowa and he'll be performing this fantastic concerto with us to open the season. Now Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto is a really famous piece. Uh, it's been featured in a you know, a variety of pop culture, you know, films and commercials, this, this type of stuff. Uh, and it's also regularly performed on the concert stage as well. So it, it's a piece that's known. And that was uh, something we wanted to do, begin the season with something familiar, something we just love to do, you know, this kind of great, grand, romantic piano concerto. And, um, and, and kind of get, dig right back into that. It's something we just haven't been able to do as much of the last couple of years. Stewart's been performing this piece and some other pieces from the classic repertoire around the world the last couple of years and garnering amazing reviews. So I think you're gonna be really excited to hear him. He'll be with me at the pre-concert talk on concert night. So join us for that. It'll take place about an hour before the show. It's a great opportunity to hear from our guest artists to learn a little bit more about who they are. And in this case, Stewart's got an amazing story about his life as a performer and also a composer. He's a teacher as well, so just a fascinating guy. I invite you to come hear a little bit more from him before you hear him perform this fantastic romantic piano concerto, the Rachmaninoff Second Concerto, that opens our concert. And on the second half, we feature a piece that was written right around the same time as Rachmaninoff's Second Concerto, but it really couldn't be more different. It's La Mer by Claude Debussy. And this is a piece we have not done here, certainly in the last quarter century, and I'm not sure if we've ever performed it. And it's been a while since we've tackled the music of WC. Although we have performed music from both of his other three movement symphonic suites. There's one, um, one he wrote before La Mer and one he wrote after La Mer. We've done some music from both of those, but we've never really um, taken a crack at this. So this is a huge moment for us as an orchestra. This is an incredibly virtuosic piece. And it's also a work that just, um, uh, you know, it's, it's like one of those signal moments in orchestral history. A lot of people point to La Mer as, as Debussy's most important orchestral work. And in the music of this time, it does really represent a, a unique and new direction in concert music, particularly orchestral music. So in that way, it's just a big occasion for us to perform La Mer for you. This is also the first time that I am performing this piece, and that's fairly rare these days. Um, you know, early in my career, everything was new. 
Now I'm lucky enough to have performed a wide body of repertoire and I don't often get to come up to a masterpiece that I've never done before. So this is really exciting uh, musically and all of these counts. And again, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a special opportunity. I think when we hear Debussy, um, there's this sort of, I don't know, unique uh, kind of communication going on. And certainly that's the case on stage with the orchestra. And also just the way that Debussy manipulates soft dynamics, um, the way he plays with instrumentation and harmony, it really invites you as a listener to kind of enter this special sound world. And so in a way, this work really embodies this idea of togetherness, you know, that Debussy's music works best when we all sort of lose ourselves in it. In this case, it's these images of the sea. And I, I want to emphasize it really is imagery of the sea. Debussy didn't really write this as like a narrative of something he saw or experienced directly. Uh, he wasn't very close to the ocean when he was writing it. But he was really inspired by other artistic representations, both, mu both musical and otherwise, of the sea. And that's really what lies behind this piece. And he brings us into this wonderful sort of aesthetically kind of sealed off little world of his. Uh, and for that 30 minutes, it's pure magic. So we're, we're just so excited to, to be doing this again, to have all of you in the hall with us and to be able to share this music together. Now, the last little segment of the program I haven't talked about is Mendelssohn's Overture to the Hebrides. And this is a concert overture, so it was not, it was not written as, a, as an opener for an opera or a theater piece. Instead, it was inspired by an experience that Mendelssohn had on a trip to Scotland uh, during a period of time when he was working on the Third Symphony. And he had a chance to go out in the sea and visit this, this uh, landmark, uh, colloquially, colloquially known as Fingal's Cave, and that's initially what he called the piece. In fact, in a letter of the time, Mendelssohn wrote the melody that starts this piece and said, this is the sound that came to me when I was in this spot, you know, kind of the, the um, forlorn, lonesome, meditative experience he had in front of this amazing natural wonder out in the ocean. And he immediately put that down on, on a, a staff, a musical staff, and sent it off to his sister, and then later developed it into this wonderful concert overture, which he revised four times. And so we're gonna play one of these uh, later revisions that we think uh, more accurately reflects his, his wishes about the piece. But what you'll experience is kind of the magic of Mendelssohn coming alive in this work. Um, so much of his music draws on the classical tradition while kind of opening up this new horizon towards romantic music. Um, and, and nowhere, I think, in his output is that more clear than in this piece where the structure and the figurations, you know, do share some elements with his predecessors like Mozart and Beethoven. But there's this kind of otherworldly sort of cosmic um, inspiration uh, that we see coming into Mendelssohn's music. And I, I think this is what really inspired um, composers and artists around him. In fact, Brahms said of this piece that if he wrote something like this, he would be happy. That would be enough for him as a composer. And I think that's a pretty high compliment to pay his predecessor Mendelssohn. Anyway, we'll let you judge for yourself at the show. Um, this is uh, gonna be a magical evening of music. We're so excited to welcome you, um, not just for the concert, but also here to Gallagher in the beautiful lobby. And it's a special occasion because we'll be uh, dedicating, rededicating the Great Hall in the memory of Catherine Gallagher, who was a friend of mine as well as a wonderful friend of the orchestra, somebody I really looked up to. And so we're really excited for the Gallagher family and just think this is such a wonderful tribute to Catherine's memory, um, this building which she and her husband had and really their whole family have been such greater supporters of and really had the vision to help make it happen here in the Cedar Valley. So we're really excited about that element of this evening's performance as well. So join us this Saturday, October 1st, featuring Stuart Goodyear. We're gonna play the Rachmaninoff Second Piano Concerto, and then of course doing the Mendelssohn and Debussy orchestral works that I spoke of, both of which inspired by the sea in different ways, um, taking you off in, on a journey into another world uh, in a wonderful evening of music and togetherness. Can't wait to see you.